Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, I will show you how to design a simple counter using the app designer's internal functions and properties, the private functions and properties options given by the uh, app designer class. I will be using that. In my, in my previous uh, video, I have shown you how you can use the external MATLAB functions or simulink model to get the inputs for the counter. So if you want to watch then please click on the link over here otherwise in this video I will show you how to use the internal private uh, functions and properties of app designer. So let's uh, start. So we will create a new app designer uh, over here. Uh, probably I will save it first. Counter app designer function properties the name doesn't matter so you can write anything so as I showed in my previous uh, video I will just quickly create a few widgets I will try to be as simple as possible because I want to focus more on the code in this particular uh, video total account this will probably zero initially and this I'll keep it as a start. Probably I'll increase the size of this. 24. This one also probably 28. I'll make it center. And I'll make it a little bigger. Yeah. Okay. So of course you can play around with these uh, properties. So once I've done this, let me give a callback to this a start function. So these things I have anyway done in my previous video. So I'm just repeating till here. Yeah. So <coughs> what we can do is once we click the start, we should start counting uh, and changing this particular variable over here. So before we increment or decrement the counter, let's create a local uh, variable for that. So for that we can do using this property option here given by the uh, app designer class. So these are like in matrix they are trying to follow the oops concept object oriented programming concept. So over here you can create either a public property or a private property. The only difference will be the property the variable which will get created will be whether it will be shared only inside the app or outside the app also. So basically if you go to the object oriented programming concept it will be accessible from another class also or only within this class. So I think I, I need to only access this variable from within this class. I don't want to expose it to the outside world because I'm not creating some very complex object oriented programming uh, uh, features here. So I'll just create a private uh, property over here. Even if you, you can click here or otherwise if you click this plus sign by default it creates a private property over here. So the name of the private property we can keep probably total count and we can initialize it to zero. We can change the description here uh, variable to store the counted value yes and uh, yeah, if you see the other properties which by default when you add the widgets the um, in the app which it gets created are public but those figures are not editable you can't access those you can't edit those so to create any of your properties, you will have to create manually like this. So I have created one uh, private uh, property and now I will create this function. So I will again create two functions here. One will be my increment function which will increment my counter by one and the output of that will be results will be equal to I have to increment basically this total count. So how to access this total count so you can go back to the properties over here you can see you can access it through this app dot total count so you can just type there app dot or in fact if you use the tab button it will automatically give you a hint so this should be app dot total count and we can add one to it so this becomes my increment similarly we can do it for the decrement as well so we can have a new function defined called decrement Uh, 
and you can just have this as minus one instead of plus one yeah so all of this uh, method or you call functions or methods are same like in object oriented program it's called methods and properties of variables are uh, private over here you're going to add more functions here either manually or either the steps over there or you can just leave it as it is so once these things are created now we'll go back to our main callback function which is over here and now we can start calling this increment or decrement one by one so we have to do it for a certain number of times let's let's do it in a loop we do it for around say 20 times this number of times you can decide how the your inputs are coming whether it's coming in a uh, sequence or whether it's a predefined matrix which you are getting from Ma in MATLAB environment using mat file so this this sequence you can get like uh, how you are getting so over here I will use that <coughs> for I for 20 times I am calling this randomly so I will again use switch command where I call this random number generator with a value of maximum 2 and if this value is 1 I will assume that this is an increment in Increment call, so I'll just call my increment over here. Increment function. So I can't call, but I can't call increment function directly. So because it's a method inside the app class, so I will probably have to call using app dot increment here. And again for case two, for the decrement, uh, this I will assume that this is a decrement call. So I will call app dot decrement and once we are done this uh, probably before we end this for loop for each cycle we will have to assign this value to our label this label over here then only it will be visible to the user from the graphical uh, user interface so what we can do is simply we can go to this app.label.text as I have done in my other video I, but I, I have to change this numerical format to string because I will be assigning this uh, total count value over here to this particular label and then I, have to, I can call that total count that's all I think it should work yeah one more thing which we can add as I add, added in my previous video I can add a small pause because then it looks cool to uh, view it can be it is nicely visible that yes your counter is increasing or decreasing and again one more thing what you can do is you can put a check like if else uh, for greater than zero and less than zero but for the simplicity in this video I will not do that so let's play this now once I click the start I was expecting it to increase or decrease but nothing is happening so let's see what is what's going wrong Yeah, so what I can understand is when we are calling this increment or decrement function those are returning the values but we are not capturing those values back again over here so I think what we should do over here is we should write those values back to our total count which is local property here and we should do it like this probably then it should work fine because we are never updating these values so although our most of the code is correct but since we are not updating these values it doesn't work so let's see now after this change whether it works or not so I have restarted yes so now I can see the values are changing okay so initially it was just toggling between minus 1 and 0 so I thought like it's just again doing some weird behavior but now I can see it's really generating some random number and it will go on for I think 20 times that is what we have set in our uh, for loop so yes it works fine so here we can do this with counting so you can make this layout more fancy as per your need and as per your requirement but this, more or less this is how we can uh, create a very quick counter using the functions or properties which is internal and private to this app over here thank you for watching my video if you have any questions please do write in my comment section if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and please do watch my previous video uh, link of given over here 
uh, for more information. Thank you and bye.